Why do you wash your towels? Towels don't get dirty. When you take a bath and dry yourself with a towel, that towel is clean. If that towel is dirty, you did a lousy job washing your body. <laughs> yes, it's comedy tonight. America's most quoted out of context TV comedy club. With Avna, the eccentric, Sandro, Dick John, and me. And the legend, the rumor, the casualty of the show, Bill Boggs, everybody. Bill Boggs. Bill! I'm here! Bill! Hello, Dick! I You're Bill Boggs! I, indeed I am. What are you doing here? Well, I'm here to give you a special message and uh, to tell our viewers something. What are you going to tell Normally on Comedy Tonight, right. when a comedian comes out on the program, we know exactly what that comedian is going to do. They come out, we know what the material is going to be, but when you, Dick Sean, are on this program, we just like to not know what's going to happen You're kidding. and turn you loose! Why? We just like to do that. You turn know? me loose? You mean yeah. do anything I really want to do? Yeah, anything. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Dick Sean! Thank you very much. That's for you. <laughs> Good evening. Tonight, my subject of the evening is the importance of the Jewish athlete in America. <laughs> it's going to be a very short talk. <laughs> in fact, it's over. <laughs> ah, no. But athletes are crazy today. Homosexuality in athletes. When I was a kid, athletes didn't have sex appeal. They played the game because they loved the game. The spirit of it all. Ugly guys. People like Bronco Nagurski, Jim Thorpe, Red Grange, guys with noses behind their eyeballs. <laughs> Rough-looking football players. But nobody watched it, especially the women. The women hated it. These guys were too ugly. So the network, television network, said, wait a minute. We've got to improve the ratings. Let's give these guys sex appeal. They used to wear canvas pants. Ugly canvas pants. Black shoes with spikes that big. Little thin, <laughs> ugly, ugly leather helmets. They played every position on mud and on film. And the network said, no, no, we must give the game sex appeal. Give these guys a little more pizzazz, get those women to watch. So they took them out of the canvas pants and put them in silk. <laughs> Tight, crotchety silk pants. <laughs> Gave their legs little white sneakers. <laughs> they don't even play on dirt anymore, green linoleum. <laughs> Bounce up, hit them on a popo. There he goes. And they're all specialists today. One guy just kicks, that's all he does. $200,000 a year. Every five minutes, this is all he does. Oh, God. <laughs> one man throws, one man blocks, one guy tackles. I'm sorry, I'm a tackler. Would you block him, please? Thank you. <laughs> and overlooking the whole game is a new sex symbol in America, the professional quarterback, an intellectual animal. Smallest man on the field. That makes him the bravest, also the smartest, the only one who can remember the plays. <laughs> and he's there every week, not afraid. 2A1, shift over 5 9, Lem 1, 7 8, 5 9. Not afraid. As 11 men on the other side want to kill him, <laughs> they're called defensive linemen. Have you ever seen the neck of a defensive lineman? It starts at the top of his head, it goes down to his shoulders. His arms are part of his rib cage. He has webbed thighs. He's sewn up from his knee to his crotch. <laughs> You can't get under him, around him, or over him. He's 350 pounds, six foot six, runs 100 yards in 10 seconds, earns his living bumping other 350 pound man called offensive linemen, who are totally offensive. <laughs> and he's not afraid. He's there every week, 2A1, shift over 5, 9, 11. The reason he's not afraid, he has some protection. You always protect the brain. He's protected by a man called a center. That's a 250 pound Gentile with a college education bent way over. <laughs> and the quarterback tucked up right underneath. QA1759. When I was a kid, the quarterback was 10 yards behind the center where a man belonged. But the network said, no, no, gotta give the game sex appeal, bring him up underneath. 
And there he is every week, 281-5911. And, and he's not afraid. He's not afraid, but he's embarrassed. <laughs> oh, yes, these are macho men. You ever see these guys? These are macho men. So the whole idea of two men locked up in front of each other with 200 million people watching is a little embarrassment. The quarterback especially, deep down in his gut, but he's trying to cover it up. But it always comes out when they call out the signals, especially the number O. I'll try to come as close as I can. 2A1, shift over, five, nine, let me. Oh, one, two, five, three. <laughs> Seven, eight, five, one, nine, two. <laughs> National League football knows they're losing money, so they want to pump the game up, give it more sex appeal. So I say within three years, they're going to put the fullback underneath the quarterback. <laughs> and have the center of the quarterback and the fullback all locked up. That means in ten years, football will be played on a very long, thin football field. <laughs> have eleven guys in one line going, oh. <laughs> And 11 guys on defense going, no! <laughs> and no referees, four guys flying around with red balloons going, <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm finished. Good night, and thank you very much. Uh, excuse me, um, Mr. Sean? Um, hi. I, uh, I hear you're a real nice guy. What do you want? <laughs> um, I was just wondering if you saw my uh, routine, and maybe, you know, being in the business a while, you might have something to say to the fledgling young duck of a comedian that I seem to be. Well, from what I've seen from your routine there, you talk too fast. Oh, you think I talk You should slow things up. Let each word soak in to the audience. Let them understand where you're heading. Then when you get to the punchline, they know where they're at. Oh, you think so, like? Yeah, I'll show you. Just do one of your stories and... Let's see your mm -hmm. tempo. Well, you know, if you're on a strange planet being chased by a nine-foot asparagus with a volcano. No, 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 it's much too fast. A little slower. Well, if you're on a strange planet being chased by a nine-foot... No, nine no, no, it's still too fast. Slow it up. Slow it up. Let the words sink in. Sink in. <laughs> well, if you're Good. on a Great. strange planet... So funny. ...being... <laughs> Chased <laughs> by a nine foot asparagus. Okay, what's the punchline? I don't know. <laughs> when I go this slow, right. I forget the end. <laughs> Thanks. I'll do anything to kill those young comics. There's too damn many of them, 800,000 comics. Every one of them under 21, sick. Keep talking slower, slower, slower. This is Dick Sean, Abner the Eccentric, Dana Gould, and of course Frank Barron in the Barron Report. And first, I want to say you've always been one of my favorites, uh, Dick Sean, and that was a good little routine there. But I understand that seriously, over the years, you have been of real help to young, a lot of young comedians. Yes. They always ask me about timing, <laughs> and I try to help them very much. Some of them listen, others don't. They don't work very much. Thank you very much. Much. That's funny. Very is a funny <laughs> word. I love that. Very much. I love show business. I can't wait to get into it. <laughs> How about Abner the Eccentric? How did it feel telling a joke on television tonight? It felt funny. I mean, it, I was it. Was it okay? Yeah, I think you did very well. But I still yeah. remember when you were back on one of our pilot shows uh -huh. and you did the napkin eating trick. Remember yeah. at the very end of the show? How did you do that? Can you keep a secret? Yeah. Me too. You're not going to tell us. No, I can't. Yeah, anyway. Me. Slower. <laughs> me too. That's luck. And again, congratulations on the Jewel of the Nile. Thank you. And literally, one of my new young favorites, Dana Gould, you're such a successful young comedian, really. Well, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do this anymore! I'm sorry. Everyone's so 
losing on me for being young. I'm sorry, Dick. I'm sorry. Funny. I'm denying from the faith, Phil. Funny. Oh, but wait, this... Oh, funny. you'll laugh at this. Funny. funny stuff coming up here, Dick. It's really fun. Yeah, yeah. I'm just taking that comedy concept. I'm going to polish it up. I'm going to zing it right back on you. Because, you know, it's not my fault the Beatles got here before I did. Now, is it there, Phil? <laughs> you know, it was like in high school. I never played football. I was always a pansy. What, oh, do you don't play football? What, do you a pansy? No, I'm not a pansy. Go in the locker room with the rest of the naked guys. Oh, okay. No fun. <laughs> I'm old enough to give birth to other younger comedians. You know, not that I would ever hold like that off. What about Dick Shaw's advice? I'm leaving. I don't need any more of this. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Good work. You'll work a Goodbye, lot. Goodbye, Data. Goodbye, everybody. Have a very lovely evening. Sleep tight. Go on.